Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Regatta OS 21 Challenger. It's a very interesting distribution. It's based on OpenSUSE and it's designed for the Linux gamer. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are in the description below. Regatta OS, what we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to their website real quick, which is regattaos.com.br. I'll put the link in the description below. And when you open up their website, it just tells you Regatta OS allows you to more easily get to what really matters, offering everything you need to enjoy better performance with your PC, whether doing simple everyday tasks, such as apps and files, as well as enjoying your favorite games or creating content. When it's simple to get new apps, you can do anything. And then down here, it kind of covers over, ready for those who love to play. You've got Regatta OS Game Access. You have easy and fast access to a vast library of games that do not yet have a native version for the Linux platform, which includes the Regatta OS. Among the titles is Grand Theft Auto, Overwatch, The Sims, and Battlefield. Game mode. Key features for gamers include Feral Interactive Game Mode, which is automatically enabled whenever a Steam or Regatta OS game access game is played. Depending on your hardware, gameplay significantly increases game performance, especially if they make use of the Vulkan Graphics API. And then down below, it covers with notebooks and hybrid graphics. It's not a problem. If you've got a notebook that's got a Radeon onboard chip and then an NVIDIA card, it's built right into the system. It's built right into the OS to natively make those work better than with any other Linux distribution. And then the same incredible experience with cross-platform software, whether it be GIMP, whether it be DaVinci Resolve, Lightworks, things like that. And then we're going to go over and check out features. It says, get to know some of the main features of Regatta. We separate the best apps for you. Access and edit your files in the cloud it means you can sync your drive right up to Regatta. Support for Vulkan and gaming mode. Covering notebooks and hybrid graphics against. Transfer your files from your smartphone to your PC. Regatta OS works with Android devices in a very simple way. This is possible thanks to the KDE Connect tool, which we have discussed in previous videos. And then game access. Get quick and easy access to your game library. Regatta OS game access which is GOG Galaxy, Battle.net, Epic Game Store, Ubisoft Channel, Origin. Games get better with Vulkan, a little of everything, game mode. So they're going over the game mode quite a bit. And then download, of course, Regatta OS Challenger. Download it right here. 2 gigahertz dual core processor, 4 gigabyte system memory, 25 gigabytes of free hard drive space, a USB port for the installer media, and default administrator password. If you download this and throw it on a USB, or put it in a virtual machine, the default password is Regatta. And then if you decide to install it and you need support, you just come over here. They got a Facebook community. They got fine tutorials. And they got the group of Regatta OS on Telegram. Or you can send a message to the team directly. That's up to you. And I think that about covers the website. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to zip on over to the desktop. If you do download Regatta OS and throw it on a USB or put it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Now, I do want to go over something real quick. If you are planning to test drive this in a virtual environment, I tried to do it in GNOME boxes and it would not give me the resolution I needed. So I had to switch to VirtualBox. Then in VirtualBox under display, you need to change it to VBOX SVGA. It wouldn't open with anything else that would give me the opportunity to change the resolution. Switching that over made it pop up just the way you're seeing it right now on the screen. Right off the bat, they've just got a plain, simple blue background. Let's right click, see if we can change it. We presently have Apollo up and I think we're going to go with something with a little more color. So let's just go to default and apply. And we will do that. So let's close out of that. That's a pretty background. Now you've got one panel. It is KDE. You're going to have your usual suspects on the bottom panel. You're going to have show desktop, date and time. You've got your hidden notifications, your clipboard, night color control, vaults, KDE Connect like they were talking about on their website. If you are an Android user, all you have to do is go to the Play Store, download the KDE Connect application, put it on your phone, sync it up with your desktop or your laptop, 
in any notifications or messages you might get, you will get them directly on your desktop. That way you can interact right from your computer as opposed to having to pick up your phone. And then you have lock key status. Then you got internet, USB, battery, then you've got your volume. And then of course your notification, it has one unread. Let's open that. And it's talking about my wired connection. So we will close that. Now, if you would like to make adjustments to your panel, all you got to do is right click on your panel, click on edit panel, and then you have a lot of different things that pop up over here under more options. You can click on that. It gives you the opportunity where you want your panel alignment, whether you want it left, center, or right. And then, of course, your bottom panel is always visible. You can set it to auto hide. Windows can cover or windows can go below. If you're somebody that wants just to get out of the way when you're working, you can go with auto hide or you can use windows that can cover. So there's some options there. If you would like to make your bar a little bigger, you can make your bar a little bigger. All you have to do is go over here, hit the plus sign, and as you can see, it gets a little bigger. We'll leave it on 51. And then, of course, you have add widgets. You can come over here. This is a list of different widgets you can use on your system. You can scroll down. If there's no widgets here that you want to use, of course, you can go download more if you choose. If you're not familiar with the way widgets work, I will show you real quick. Let's say you wanted a weather report on your desktop. All you got to do is left click, hold, drag it over and drop it on your desktop and then click configure. For some reason, because of the present theme out of the box, it doesn't seem that the weather widget wants to show me anything. I do know the third one down is NOAA, so I will click it, and then I will do a search for Dallas. And it gives me Dallas Love Field, so I will select that one, and then obviously apply it. And then you're going to have weather right on your desktop, if that's something you want. Just adjust it to where you want it. Once it's where you want it, go ahead and close. Widgets are closed, it's locked into place. That's just one of the widgets out of the thousands you can download. If you end up giving this distribution a try, I suggest you go down there, play around with the widgets for a little bit, see what's in there, see what you might like to customize your system with. Now, if you've got a widget out here and you don't want it anymore, just right click on it, remove weather report, and it is gone. It's that easy. So now we will come down to the bottom. You've got your panel, you've got Regatta OS Store. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, the store has loaded. And as you can tell, it is a pretty decent looking store. Right up top, you've got recommended. You've got Steam, Spotify, Google Chrome, WPS Office. And then down below that, you have things like OpenOffice, Brave, and then most popular free games. That's what I like about this is it gives you, if you're a gamer, you've got CSGO, you've got Star Conflict, you've got Champions, you've got Dota, you've got GIMP, Inkscape, Krita, things like that. Now, you can go up here to the Discover Create, work, play, develop. Let's click on play. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Hitman. It's not free, but it's a Steam game. They let you know down here right off the bat if it's free. If it's not free, they've got your emulators listed right here. And then, of course, Steam, Lutris, Play on Linux. Now, if you're just wanting to look for an application, you can go up into the search. I'm going to go for OBS, hit enter. And there's OBS Studio. It gives you the rating. And then you could go over and install it on your system. So let's go back. So that's your Regatta OS store. I like the look of it. It goes along with the theming very well. There are a lot of stores out there that when you open them up in an operating system, you can tell they just don't go with the operating system. This one is very cohesive and fits right in. So we will close out of that. Back down to the panel. You've got the Regatta OS game access. Access your Windows games from Regatta OS. So let's click on that and see what that looks like. It has opened up, and here is the Regatta OS game access. Right here, as you can see, it's got available launchers, Battle.net, Epic's Game Store, GOG Galaxy, Origin, Rockstar Launcher, Ubisoft Connect. And then down here for you, you've got available for free at Epic, available for free at Epic. So it shows you the free games that you can do. You can play now with the Rockstar Launcher, Grand Theft Auto V. And then I guess if you click on one of these, let's just click on one. Game accessible through Rockstar Game Launcher. And it shows you the games that are available. And then I guess you can go up here to settings. Show FPS for the games. Automatically close games. And then it would list all of your games. List with some of the games that you can run with Regatta OS. And it shows you right here the games that you can run. Battlefield, Fallout 3, Child of Light, FIFA 18, Grand Theft Auto, Need for Speed Payback. 
So it shows you the games that you can play right out of the box. Let's go to battle.net, Diablo, Overwatch, World of Warcraft. Now, know this right off the bat. If it's a game that requires anti-cheat, like your Call of Duties or your Fortnites, of course, they're not going to work in this system. But there's good news because Valve has been working on, and I do believe they have just released the first version of Anti-Cheat for Linux. So it's coming, guys. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. But gaming on Linux is definitely making great strides right now. So hang tight because being able to play games on Linux as opposed to Windows is definitely going to be a plus. So that's a quick look at the Regatta OS game access. So let's close out of that. And then you've got your file manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. That should be Dolphin. As you can see, nice, light, quick, fast file manager. Doesn't get in your way. If there's anything over here you don't want listed like recent, I don't need that. Let's go ahead and right click and hide that. Now, if you would like to make these a little bigger so you can see them a little better, just right click in this open area down here. Go to icon size. Move that up to large if you want. Now that makes it easier to see. You've got your usual suspects over here and then you've got your home folder folders right here. So now if you want to make these a little bigger, all you got to do is come down here to the zoom bar, go on the slider and slide it up. You can make those as big or as small as you want. So I'm going to bump that back up. But that's a Dolphin file manager. Let's close out of that. And then, of course, we've already seen Firefox. So let's go ahead and open up the Regatta app menu. And you have games. We've already looked at the Regatta OS game access. You've got graphics, which comes with Gwynview, Ocular, Scanlight. Internet, you've got KDE Connect and Firefox, Multimedia, Pulse Audio, VLC Media Player, Office, you've got Ocular and Printers. Settings, you've got your firewall settings, your graphical settings. Let's go ahead and look at graphical settings real quick. Now you can come in here, especially if you're going to be doing any kind of creating or gaming on this operating system. You can come in here for screen settings, test the dedicated GPU. You can turn desktop effects on or off. Prevent screen tearing is enabled. And CPU power right now is balanced. You can actually change that to performance if you want. And then you can go over to performance. And because I'm in a virtual box, I don't think I'm going to have much data here. It does show at present I'm using 88% or 66% of my two CPUs I have issued. And at rest, we're at 777 megabytes of 2.9 gigabytes of RAM I have issued to the virtual machine. So that's running pretty light, actually, for a system that has so much integrated into it for gaming. And then it'll give you your system info, graphic, chipset, video memory size, operational system, system memory, and then just different things you can use and look at down here. So that's pretty impressive. I like that. Let's close out of that. Okay, we will go back up to settings. We looked at graphical printers, SC controller. This is where you Go in if you're going to be gaming and you can come in here and it's already got a program to where you can plug your controller in and get it set up for use. It's got desktop, Xbox controller with high precision camera, Xbox controller, or you can go in with a new profile. Just plug your controller in. If it's recognized, you can go in and set a new profile for it and get it set up. Back over to settings. System settings. If you know KDE, this is definitely familiar to you. Right here is where you can set your light and dark themes. You got your animation speed right here. You can change your wallpaper, show more appearance settings, clicking files or folders. One click selects them, double click opens them. If you want a one click open, all you got to do is click right there and that adjusts it to a one click open. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there because I'm used to double clicking. Let's go to appearance. When you open Appearance, it opens up all your global themes. Right now, we're using the Regatta OS theme. If you would like to change themes and you want something that's a little different, but you don't like what's here, just go down here to get new global theme, and you can download literally thousands of them. Application styles, your plasma styles. You just got to get in here, look around. If there's things you want to change, you can change them right here. Now, I am going to tell you, if you do go over and download a new global theme, We'll use Regatta. Let's say you downloaded Regatta and you've applied it. You go to Plasma Style. What you're going to want to do is once you download a theme, that theme will have a Plasma Style that goes with it. Like here, we've got K Regatta OS 5 or you've got K Regatta OS 5 Lite. Right now, it's going with the OS 5, but if you downloaded something different, what you do is come in here, find the name of the theme you downloaded, click on the Plasma Style, and then click Apply, and then that way it would apply it across the operating system. And of course, you can customize color, window decorations. You can adjust the size of your fonts. If you 
want your fonts a little bigger, all you got to do is come over here, click on font, click on size, and then scroll down a little bit. Let's say you wanted to go to 12, click OK, and then click Apply. And then it will change your font size across the operating system. Icons, same thing here. If you've downloaded a theme and you've got a set of icons that come with it, come in here, choose the name of those icons, click Apply. Let's back out of appearance. Then you can adjust the settings on everything from workspace behavior, window management, shortcuts, startup shutdown, notification. You can enter your online accounts if you would like to. Connection settings, input devices, audio settings, power management, system information, YAST. If you go over to system information, we're using KDE Plasma 5.22.5. Kernel versions 5.14.9, which is the most recent kernel. And then your graphics platform is X11. And then you have YAST. Let's launch it. Regatta. And YAST is a nice little command center. And if you're familiar with OpenSUSH, you're familiar with YAST. You can come in here. You've got hardware information. You can choose repositories for the installation of software packages, hardware info, system keyboard layout, scanner, software management. You can come in here and install and remove software from right there as opposed to the store we looked at a while ago. Bootloader, kernel settings, partitioner, mail server, Samba server. You've got a lot of different things you can do inside of YAST. Then you've got system, network, security, support, and of course, miscellaneous. Lots of different tools inside the YAS control center. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then we can close out of system settings. So that pretty much is Regatta OS. KDE Plasma based on OpenSUSE and made with the Linux gamer in mind. Is Regatta OS something you're going to download, throw in a USB and put in a virtual machine? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you go today, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel on Patreon, those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.